you have to really do it. Don't, don't go for the small changes. We didn't even learn what color is the best color for, uh, for buttons. So we just went with one color, we stuck with that, and we knew that it's as good as, uh, as any other. So learning from this, I, I said, well, I have to make something b bigger. I have to make something that counts. And one of the things that came to mind was, um, at first, in, in our solitaire games, we had uh, only draw one mode. And there were some people who would win game after game after game after game. And we thought, hey, let's give this guy some challenge. And from playing the solitaire game on Windows, we knew that the hard game was draw three, because you, it's way easier to get stuck. So we made a draw three game and put in uh, a draw three mode. And we presented it like this the first time. So. Um, Basically, we told the users that uh, they either had to pay, uh, five magic was quite a lot, uh, or they have to play a lot in uh, draw one to uh, reach the draw three stage. So it's basically a game that would unlock after, I don't know, a week or so of playing the normal game. Uh, and also, we, we had, a, after you unlock this, we had a special button that you could switch between draw one and draw three. I don't think you have noticed uh, it in the first slide, but now you barely notice it because I put a red thingy uh, on it. So what we did basically was we spent uh, resources, uh, we worked on this, we, the concept, the graphics uh, and uh, the development, we worked on this uh, quite a lot and um, we didn't, basically we didn't actually put it in the game. We just made a button that nobody pressed. And 1% of the people, after a couple of, uh, of weeks, only 1% of the people would play uh, the draw tree mode. And it was, it was pretty easy. You just had to log in and press a button, and then your game is draw three. But people didn't do that. They didn't press the small button on top. They pressed the big play button in the middle. And that's, uh, that's normal, right? Uh, so what we did was uh, we added fluff in the game. We added a functionality that people didn't use. And what's worse, uh, we kept this functionality uh, for uh, four months uh, before saying, okay, let's, let's see what, what happened there. And in these four months, we invested about one day per week uh, to fix bugs in the draw three mode that nobody was playing. So. Uh, whenever you add something to your game, uh, when you add a new game mode, make sure people play it, make sure people understand, not promise it after like, you know, two weeks of playing. No, give it to them right then and there. Um, and we, we, there, that was a complex mistake that we did. It's not just one mistake, it's multiple mistakes. We didn't even ask why people aren't playing. We just said, okay, so maybe they, they like draw, draw one. They like to play with one card. They don't like being challenged. They like to win just like that, game after game. Um, we didn't ask why. But in the end, we, we did. So after four months in which we spent uh, one day a week to uh, maintain this functionality, we finally said, OK, let's see why people don't play this game. And we added a, a, a pop-up. Uh, in the first session of the users, in which we asked them which game they would play. And actually, 45% of the people chose uh, to play with three cards instead of one, uh, up from the previous 1%. So what we did then, because we knew it was not a solution to keep both modes in the same app, because people would just uh, stick to the default uh, and play just like that, just press play and play for a while and just close the tab. Uh, we made a, a separate app in which people could only play draw three solitaire. And uh, that app would be played, so 80% of the people who played uh, draw one solitaire in one app would go on and play draw three solitaire in the other app at the same time. So the uh, total amount of time that people spent in our apps increased because uh, we didn't have just a small button on the side, uh, but we had a full-fledged game with the added functionality. 
Um, and now we, we said, okay, so we didn't really understand this challenging versus non-challenging uh, aspect. Why do people play? Um, do people play because they want to win? Do people play just to pass the time? We didn't really understand that. So uh, initially, as a joke, uh, we thought about making a, a game in which everyone wins. That's not a very hard sell. I mean, everybody likes winning, right? So uh, we made a, a bingo game, and we assumed everyone would love it because they would uh, play, and it would be really easy, uh, and yeah, they just bingo and win and play uh, more and more. So the initial game, I won't tell you the exact number, but it's, you, you will see. Uh, we had just rounds of, of uh, bingo, and I assume you guys know how, how bingo works, right? You have a card with numbers, and there's a caller that calls the numbers, and you mark them on your card, and if you have a line or a diagonal or something like that, uh, you win, right? And we made sure the caller would call enough numbers for people to win basically every time. Uh, and then we said, okay, this is good, numbers are good, retention is okay, uh, people come and play and, and stay in the game. Uh, let's make tournaments. Tournaments is something we uh, had in uh, the solitaire games as well, and they increased engagement even more. Um, so, in tournaments, people who didn't win, so not everybody won, there's not 100% win rate. Uh, in, in tournaments, whoever won in round one of the tournament would move on to round two. And you would imagine in round two, be, because there are uh, people of uh, higher level, they, they know how to play, right? At least they won once. Uh, it would be slightly more difficult. And then round three, even more difficult, with people who won in both round one and round two. And the win rate was the same. Uh, because we uh, measured the overall rate and uh, the people who uh, would call bingo in round one would be actually the people who are paying attention to the numbers, so it was highly likely for them to uh, win the game even in a competition with, uh, with the other people. But then, uh, there's another way to um, change the complexity of the, of the game in bingo, uh, and if you visited a uh, bingo hall, you may have seen people uh, who sit at a table, at a big table, all by themselves, and they have tens of bingo cards. And they, I don't know how they do it, really. They just mark all the cards at the same time, and they can do that. So there's a, a, a second layer of complexity, but this time it is defined by the users. So the user decides uh, if they want to keep it casual, uh, keep it chill, and play with one card. And of course, if you play in our game in Cold Bingo, you could play with up to four cards. Uh, of course, if you play with four cards and if you manage to keep the tabs on all cards, you would have a bigger chance because it's like four people playing in the end, right? Um, but we had the same win rate when uh, we tried to make it uh, more difficult. We basically, we reduced the numbers that were called so that uh, people will, would start losing. Why is that? Because people self-regulated their difficulty um, and when they saw that they started losing more because the caller would call fewer numbers and the game would end before they would manage to call bingo on their cards, they started playing with more cards so they had more chances. And uh, this, the win rate it was the same in the three scenarios within 0.5% or something like that uh, so really, really uh, close. So basically, people wanted to win, uh, and they would even make the game more difficult for uh, for themselves in order to do to do that. But it was not our decision how difficult the game would be. It was their decision. They wanted the game to be of that certain difficulty so that they felt well uh, when winning. Because if it's too easy, you don't have fun, right? It's children's play. You don't like that. If it's too hard, then you get frustrated and you don't want to play. So the people know what they want, and if there is a way uh, to give them that, if, if you can give them uh, difficulty selection, perhaps not as specific as you know the classic novice, amateur, pro, nightmare, something, something, 
uh, they will take it and they will make the uh, experience their own. But what we had to do, we assumed that people like to win, but it's not like that. They like to win, but under certain circumstances. And uh, for the second half uh, of the presentation, I give the floor to Vali. Thank you, Radu. So uh, for the next uh, three items on our list, I want you to think big. Big like numbers, millions of users, because everyone creates games and hopes that um, uh, they will, they, uh, they will going to be played by millions of players. Um, You've seen one example in um, Scott Hum Humphrey presentation earlier, uh, the example with uh, Simpsons uh, launch. They had some problem with servers. Well, uh, we also had that problem, and uh, that was because we didn't optimize along the way. So, uh, as I was saying, think big, like World Cup big. Uh, there were 3.5 billion of estimated football fans over the world, and uh, at that time, we had uh, almost 70 million players on Facebook, the platform where we wanted to launch our game. Uh, of course, we, take, uh, we took uh, about uh, six to eight month, months to um, prepare, but uh, we had in mind only one uh, focus, and that was to be a playable uh, game, uh, users to enjoy this game. We didn't take any time in consideration uh, about how many people were going to be in, that, in our game, and how many people can uh, come to your game in one night. So, the World Cup came, and uh, along with it, an uh, interesting feature from uh, our platform, from Facebook, that uh, almost uh, multiplied our session nine times. So, that can be a really headache for our programmers, because uh, we spent almost 48 hours on a, a developing, developer uh, marathon. Uh, was enough to turn our developers from this to this. <laughs> yeah, and um, meanwhile, what were our heads think thinking of? Well, um, we like to uh, think that uh, we wanted to do a polished game, so we maintain our uh, focus on uh, doing polished but untested concepts. We took over two weeks to test a um, viralization tool, uh, tickets to send tickets to your friends, and uh, after those two weeks, we didn't have any return of investments. There were no, not so ever, any numbers that indicated that our tool was good. So uh, we actually, what we did here was to spend valuable resources, mostly in time. Two weeks is a lot to test just this feature. And uh, talking about resources, uh, most of people think that uh, creating a game, it takes only dev time, uh, or um, uh, QR time, or graphic time. Well, uh, that's not exactly entirely true. There are many other resources that you need to focus on. There are uh, opportunities that you may miss, or maybe there are weeks of debugging, something that you didn't know it was there, but was bugging everyone else. Uh, you have iteration to do. You finally find um, a feature, and you want to do it best of it. You want to make it best of it. So you practically iterate and iterate and iterate until you find something that suits you. Uh, also, there are maintenance time. You have some problem. You need to um, uh, prepare uh, your servers. You need to uh, focus on one feature that doesn't work quite well. You need to do some maintenance. Uh, at the end of the day, it's all about money, time, and, uh, of course, your life. So, um, we did some mistake, some mistakes. We did some titles that took months to go, to go live with them. Uh, like uh, Majong Arena, Call Bingo was one game that Radu presented earlier. Uh, football Team Arena, we also start by, uh, by uh, doing uh, six months uh, developing, uh, but we kind of missed the opportunities of uh, major features from Facebook. Um, it's, it's very important to think that if one game is going to fail, you want to fail quickly, because failing quickly gives you more time to think about other games. As a small recap, all these mistakes that you've seen here are um, practically just uh, resource consumptions without any uh, return of investments. But one thing you can do 
to turn this into uh, valuable knowledge is to acknowledge the mistakes and uh, try to learn as much as you can from them. So this is what I hope that you will uh, remember. Uh, make mistakes, but always learn from them. Thank you. <laughs> if there are any questions, that will be a great time to answer them. No one at all. Well, something that I learned is that not having a question is not a good idea, it's not a good thing. It, it was a perfect presentation. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Andre. Okay, thank you.